So my s story started out, um, I was living in Boulder, you know, recent college grad, and um, I had actually had, um, I was having a repeated nightmares. So um, I'm, I take the approach with psychotherapy that um, dreams are kind of messages from the subconscious and they often can pick up on things um, ahead of time that the conscious mind uh, tends to block out. Um, so my story starts with, um, I was having these dreams, these repeated nightmares that I was being strangled, very disturbing. I would wake up in the middle of the night and you know just almost feel like hand prints around my neck. Um, so I ha had these dreams, you know, didn't understand what they were. Um, and then I also had a dream that I um, had a cyst behind my throat, or behind my vocal cords in my throat, excuse me. And I was trying to, you know, kind of remove this cyst, heal it. Um, well, these dreams turned out to kind of foreshadow a, a really severe illness that I was about to have. So um, in February 2008, uh, I had a very high fever for about seven days straight, um, you know, went to the hospital, you know, they couldn't diagnose or figure out what, is, what was wrong with me, so they sent me home, and I, I knew something was wrong. I knew I was on the verge of death. So um, I went home with my family, they took care of me for two more days, and then um, this rash began to form around my neck and moved very quickly down, you know, um, into my chest and abdomen. And um, I ended up contracting what the doctors found was necrotizing fasciitis, also known as the flesh-eating bacteria. So it's a very, um, very life-threatening illness. Given the severity of the infection and where it was located in my throat and chest, had about a 1% chance of, of making it. Um, and when I had, made it to the hospital, I was in septic shock, a lung had collapsed, and I do have a paralyzed vocal cord um, as a result of um, all the surgeries and also um, being on a breathing ventilator for so long. Um, so I was rushed to the hospital, my family was there, um, very you know supportive through this entire time, and I was in a medically induced coma for about um, a little over a month, and while I was in this coma, um, I didn't necessarily clinically die, but I was kind of suspended in this other dream world. And um, these dreams very much reflected what was happening with my body. Um, you know, my, this may sound kind of graphic, but they had to open my chest up and just continually suck out the infection. So I was aware on some level what was you know, happening to my body, and I had three very significant dreams, which I won't go into detail here for time's sake, but I do remember um, one very poignant dream where I you know, was in a very hopeless situation, and I l saw my sister, and that um, was really my choice for returning. Um, I, I think I realized how it would affect me and just this love that transcends um, the time and space uh, caused me to, to want to return. So upon you know waking up from the coma, I had incredible challenges to overcome. I couldn't breathe on my own. Um, it, it was very challenging just to, um, you know, wean myself off the ventilator. My lungs had atrophied. I could not speak. Um, I could. I couldn't talk. I couldn't walk. I was down to about eighty something pounds. Um, and the doctors would say, "Well, she's overcome it this day, but we don't know. You know, if her kidneys will fail or liver." And um, you know, so it, it was very kind of discouraging for for my family. And um, but for me, I. I after waking up from that coma, I had this incredible will to live and this inner strength that um, I didn't necessarily have before. And that, that's what drove me. Um, you know, even just, 
you know, I had so many setbacks while I was in the hospital. I, I had suffered from a heart attack. You know, I would make a little bit of progress and then there'd be a setback. But I really learned to um, kind of do the work, but then let go and really um, kind of surrender to the whole experience. Um, that That's one thing that, you know, this near-death experience has taught me is just the power of, of surrendering um, humility, being able to, you know, accept um, help from others. I wouldn't have made it through this experience without that. And prior to my experience, you know, I was a very um, competitive, type A, ambitious person. And, and it's extremely humbling to be in a position where you're relying on nurses and, and your family to help, you know, do the smallest things for you. So, so that was a huge lesson. Um, and even though, you know, I had to kind of cope with these changes, uh, you know, to my, to my body, emotionally, you know, I suffered from PTSD. Um, I just, I felt, um, less pressure to kind of live up to the ideals of society and, um, really began kind of my own journey of, of being forced to honor, um, more authentic parts of myself, uh, in, intuition. My intuition was just really increased. I was having e extremely lucid, vivid dreams every night. And, you know, prior to my illness, I'd had these warning dreams, but I, I was not listening to them. I didn't get the message. And after this experience, it, it forced me to really be, you know, more authentic, more in touch with that part of myself that I had tried to shut out because of the pressures of, you know, society and, um, you know, images we all try to live up to. Um, so that, I guess, you know, that's just kind of briefly my own experience. There's a lot more to it, but my kind of message is, um, I, I don't know <laughs> what my message is, just, humility, surrender, and um, paying attention to these, you know, subtle, subtle messages that come through, whether that's through kind of, you know, synchronicity, um, dreams, even just paying attention to what our bodies are saying. Um, yeah, that's about it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Christine.